What's going on coders and welcome to episode 4 of our document service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about paragraphs. So the top 5 methods that I have for this video are get paragraphs, copy, insert paragraph, append paragraph, and set indent first line. So let's look at the code and see these methods in action. There are a lot of different elements that can go on a Google document, however, based on the theme and the nature of Google documents, and I can verify this with the work that I do, most of the time you'll be dealing and modifying paragraphs and the text in those paragraphs. So if we go back into our Google document, you can see again we have paragraphs like this, but we also have different uh, uh, page elements such as a table, an image, and some list items, uh, among other elements that we could add. Uh, but however, again, Google Documents, most of the time you'll just be having uh, paragraphs and text and stuff like that. So let's, for lo let's, lo let's look first at our uh, the method that we're going to begin this video with, and that is get paragraphs. So let's say we just wanted to get all the paragraphs that are on this document. So again, we need to specify which section of the document we're talking about. To remind you, there are there is four sections. It is the um, the header, the body, the footnotes, and the footer. So again, most of the time you'll be dealing in the body, so that is what I'm showcasing now. So the method to get the paragraphs, again, it's going to be get paragraphs, and that's going to return for us an array of paragraphs. So again, these are already type converted into the type of paragraph, so they're not just generic elements. So that's pretty nice. Um, all right, so if we now log or log this just to see that this is indeed working and giving us back all of our paragraphs. We'll hit the run button and we'll view the logs. And I just before the before we wait on these logs and see what we get, I just want you to guess how many paragraphs are on this document, right? So you may say, all right, well this one's definitely a paragraph. You could probably guess that these are going to be paragraphs as well. Um, and maybe, you know, these as well, they're probably gonna be paragraphs. Um, but if we look back into our logs, you can see that we have around like 20 to 30 paragraphs, and that's quite a bit more, at least for me, I was pretty surprised at how many paragraphs there were, because uh, I was not expecting the, that many paragraphs. So where are they all coming from? Well, whenever you hit, first off, whenever you hit the carriage return key or the enter key, um, that is considered adding a new paragraph. So we have, yes, this, you're right, this is a paragraph, but then this is also a paragraph right here. So this is an empty paragraph for sure, but it is a paragraph. So all these empty lines, they are considered paragraphs. So just uh, just this alone, all of these are considered paragraphs. That's like 10 paragraphs right there. Um, however, you ha again, there are different elements that can go on a document, but you can have nested elements within those elements. So this is a big one right here. This is a table. However, you can have paragraphs within those table cells. So you can have um, all of these right here. These are all considered paragraphs. Again, empty paragraphs but these are considered paragraphs. So right here alone, there's 12 more cells. So that means 12 more paragraphs right there, um, just as it is right there. Also, this is a list. This is definitely considered a list. However, you can have your list items be paragraphs. So these three, again, are also considered paragraphs. So with all of these different uh, uh, enter keys and, um, and um, or new lines and then also table cells and then list items, that is where you're getting all of your different paragraphs from. Alrighty, so let's move on to the next method now and in it is copy. So let's say we really liked a, um, a paragraph, right? And uh, let's say we really like this one and so we wanted to get this paragraph and we wanted to copy it. So this is actually going to be index eight of our array and you can verify that real quick. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that we're just hard coding this in right here. There are, you know, there's more dynamic ways to do this, um, but I'm just trying to showcase some of these methods and trying to be somewhat expedient about it. So I'm just going to hard code the eight in there. And then the method to copy, I just wrote it out right now, but uh, the method to copy that paragraph and get a copy of it is very simple. It's just copy and it returns for you the a copy of that paragraph. Alrighty, so that is how to copy it. And now let's just store it in a constant, we'll call it paragraph, and then we're going to use it now in our next method. So now let's say we really like this paragraph and we wanted to append it to the bottom, right? Because all in all of your literature classes, they always say, all right, 
Your thesis statement should be at the beginning of your essay, but then it should also be at the end of your essay. So this is our, the mis our, our the thesis statement. So it's at the beginning now, let's append it to the very bottom. So again, the method append, uh, append anything really, is going to take that anything and put it at the end of, of the document or the slides or the, um, the spreadsheet, where, where, wherever you're working. So if we say, uh, um, not paragraph, I'm sorry, if we say body.append paragraph, this is now going to, um, this is now going to append a either a specific paragraph that's already converted as a type of paragraph, and we have that right here, or we can just add new string. Uh, we can add new text, which is of type string, um, and then we can just create a new paragraph just like that. But we're going to first showcase uh, this method right here, or this option. So we have our paragraph right here, and we're going to append that to the body. And again, append is going to stick it at the very bottom. So if we hit save and we hit run, we can now check out, yes, and we did first, again, get this one. We got this uh, paragraph, but then we copied it and we pasted it or we appended it at the very bottom. All right, so that is pretty cool. Um, and again, if you needed to, you could add a, uh, you could append, say, a carriage return or um, a new line right here if you needed some space in between these two. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's just an option that you could do. All right, so that is appending paragraphs. Now let's talk about inserting paragraphs. So appending paragraphs is a fast and easy way to just put paragraphs at the very bottom of your document. But if you had something that you wanted to insert at any specific location or in any location within your document, you could use the method insert paragraph. So this takes one more required parameter and that is uh, the child index. So there are a lot of different, as they say, children, children elements on this document. Um, and then you can, and then these are all indexed. So again, this is index zero, um, one, two, three, four, five, all that stuff. So um, you need to specify which index you would like to put the child in, uh, or this new paragraph. So we already did the paragraph option right here. Now let's look at the string. So this, it, this is basically if you have a new string of text, and I have it right here, then you can insert that string um, in, in, in the body. So again, I have this very wonderfully written paragraph right here, and I wanna insert that right after um, paragraph uh, eight. So I wanna actually insert it in position nine, and position nine is going to be right here, right? So again, this was the eighth, this was the eighth element of the, uh, of the, of the body, um, of all the child elements. So if we want it in position nine, we would have to specify uh, right here. If we want it right after here, after this uh, element right here, we'd have to specify position nine. All right, so now let's just save it and we'll run it just to verify that this is going to work. All right, and there it is right here. Um, again, if you um, if you want like a new line in between these two uh, paragraphs, you could add something like uh, backslash R, and then this would say uh, to the, um, like this is just a way of saying, all right, hit the return key, and then type all this text. Um, but um, that is just one way you could do it. We're not going to include it again, um, but that is how to say hit the return key first, and then include the text. All right, so Let's look at one more method, and that is set indent first line. So with paragraphs, you can uh, you can definitely insert them, but they are going to default so that they start at the very beginning of this uh, of this margin right here, right? But however, most of the time we signify it's a new paragraph by giving a little indent, right? An indentation. So if we want now to indent this paragraph, we would first need to get it right. So um, First, we were going to get our ninth element now because we just inserted that new one. And then instead of uh, getting the copy of it, we're going to get the actual original. And then we, what we can say now is we can say uh, paragraph dot set indent first line. And this is going to take in a parameter, which is called indent first line. It's a number. And this is going to be the number of points from the start of the uh, margin, basically. Um, you want to indent from. So I have my indent set to 36 points. This is basically a 30, 36 point indent. You can specify whatever number you'd like, but I'm just going to say 36 for now. 
And if I hit save and I hit run, you can check out that now this paragraph has been indented. So it looks like a very new uh, paragraph, um, just like how it is right now. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about paragraphs. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the next one.